Engineer. Oh, um, John, the Med Pot Engineer, coming to tell you what's been happening with legalizing Med Pot in the courts over the last few years. This was me back in 2003. You can recognize the hat on Parliament Hill with seven pounds of marijuana on the day before they were supposed to decriminalize. For some of us who thought the law was already dead, that would have been recriminalized, and that's why I went to let Parliament know I was mad. Now, the next day's article in the Ottawa Citizen had this article, me being arrested, and Ottawa holds back marijuana bill. Now, what does that mean? Well, this guy here, you can see him in the back, that's Eugène <laughs> Belmar. He was the uh, member for Ottawa East. And I'm in the Guinness Book of Records for running in more elections than anyone else in history, for running in more elections than anyone else in history. They have fun saying super loser fails again. But I wanted to legalize marijuana for sure all those times. Now, after this happened, Parliament was prorogued three weeks later, and they never ever brought back a marijuana bill in Parliament. And that's important, because once it's dead, it stays dead. So, two months later, and I'm going to tell you the story, Terry Parker the epileptic in 2000 won the declaration, you've got to have an exemption for sick people if you want to make it illegal for healthy people. You want prohibition, you've got to have an exemption. Well, a year later, they gave him a year to do it, and they exempted Parker for a year. Well, a year later, they issued the MMAR so people could apply. But it took too long. You needed all these doctors. You know, the doctors wouldn't sign. So anyway, it took two years to prove the MMAR was not a good exemption. And when they did, they dropped the charges against four thousand people. Wow. And the Court of Appeal has explained that when there's a bad exemption, there's no offense. And they said there's only been one period of Bino when the Hitzig decision in 03 found that there was a bad exemption because they only allowed three growers per garden and one patient per grower. Now, the kid JP was busted for possession. And the Hitzig case was arguing that the MMAR is flawed. So when the Hitzig case wins and proves the MMAR is flawed, the JP kids said, well, that means no offense for me. Quash my charges. And they did. Then at the Superior Court, the Crown appealed. When he won, JP, Justice Rogan, said, Beano, they dropped all the charges in Ontario in the summer of 03. Then after October, when the Court of Appeal said, agreed, bad exemption, no offense, the JP decision, then they dropped all the remaining charges across Canada. So you get it? When there's a bad exemption, there's no offense. And what made it bad the last time was regulations on growers. One patient per grower, three growers per garden. Now, we got another Beano period that just happened. The Smith decision at the Supreme Court of Canada just found that it violates the rights of the patients not to be able to use oil. You can't put dried bud on your tumor. You need oil. Therefore, what killed more people? Not being able to use it right? or not enough growers per garden. So, if not enough growers per garden was judged a bad enough exemption in 2003, what about not letting people use it right, which we just won in June of this year? Now, even though I was busted while possession was deemed invalid and cultivation deemed invalid, because I was bringing it to the Prime Minister, they charged me with possession for the purpose of trafficking. And they said, sure, it may be illegal to possess and cultivate, but no one said it's legal to possess for the purpose of trafficking to the Prime Minister. So I was still convicted. 
dollars in charges dropped, I did that, and I'm still convicted. So I got a hundred hours playing my accordion in all folks' homes. But it now allows me to make an application on the 21st to ask the Ontario Court of Appeal, Ontario's highest court, for an extension of time to file a notice of appeal because I didn't know they were going to say the Smith decision found the NMAR was bad all the way to 2001 when I was convicted. So I want to overturn my conviction late and everybody in the last 14 years who has been convicted for marijuana can use the new Smith decision at the Supreme Court to say, hey, if JP beat it with Hitzig bad exemption, I want to beat it with the Smith bad exemption, and I want to overturn my conviction. So right now, I got four people in Quebec, Montreal, who have filed motions to quash their charge just like JP did. And they're saying, we want the same as JP. I got three guys in Ontario who filed motions to quash their current charges, saying, we want the same as JP. And the other provinces are going to start soon. But in the meantime, all these guys here, motions to quash, are below with trial judges. But if you're already convicted, you can enter above at the Court of Appeal one step away from the Supreme Court of Canada. So, I am filed for the 21st of this month to ask to be able to appeal because of Smith. And I got seven other people who filed to do that too. And I got Carolyn Kenny, who was convicted of possession of marijuana, to fill out the simple form saying, I want to overturn my conviction because I didn't know when I pleaded that they were going to say there'd been an exemption bad all along and there was no offense. And I want off and overturn my conviction. I want my fine back and I want the value of my pot. I got, now my guy in Montreal, Dominic Gravel, one of my biggest earlier fights, 6,000 plants. How much does the government say a plant is worth when they charge people? A thousand bucks, right? So his claim's going to be for six million bucks. Now, here's what's happening. I got Dominic and another guy going into the Quebec Court of Appeal on the 22nd, the day after me and my nine in Toronto. And then I got Alicia McDermott going into the Alberta Court of Appeal with two other people. Hasn't got a date yet. But I'm trying to get as many people into the courts of appeal of their provinces to overturn their conviction because of Smith as possible. And that's the only way the media will ever cover it and tell you what the Smith decision really means. The Smith decision works just like the Hitzig decision worked for, B, for JP, and I get to be the first person to ask. Now, I'm going to tell you a really ugly story about what happened out in D.C. How many people had exemptions? Anybody with exemptions now? No? Well, anyway, if you did, half of them would have lost their exemptions last year. What they did was they announced in October 13 that no more grower exemptions. Everybody's going to have to buy. And when your exemption expires, the only way to stay legal is to destroy your stash you spent eight years growing and start buying and have a proof of purchase. Now, how many people do you think, when their exemption expired, destroyed their stash and went and started buying. <laughs> not many. Okay, not well, that many. Favor. My daughter's up there. Yeah. And, and you're you're pretty loud, which is okay. But don't swear. The guy here, I can hear. I thought I heard some swearing. What did I say about mm. swear? I try to keep it clean. Okay, cursing. If you can try to keep it clean, I I heard it. So just. Oh. Okay. Well, yeah. I appreciate it. I'm well, running for. Video if you YouTube for Prime Minister of the Planet, I come up. 
so I don't try and curse very often. I ran for prime minister in 1993. I had a casino. For those of you who play whole of them, I'm known as the Taj Professor. Ever seen Rounders with Matt Damon? Anyway, there's a big scene at the Taj Mahal with the chandeliers, and I was known as the professor there because I was the teaching assistant of Canada's only mathematics and gambling course. Okay? So, that's why, having been busted so often, I knew how to use the courts. And that's why I got these kits. Last year, in federal court, after this had happened, I got 300 people to file motions asking a judge for an interim exemption. They all got stayed because of the case out in BC, the Allard case. Have you heard of it? No? You never heard of the BC case? Well, anyway. Oh, okay. After six months, just before everybody's exemptions are stopped and they've got to go on April 1st, they have a hearing in BC. And the judge says, I extend everybody's grow licenses. But only people with current possessed licenses are active. So you need a possessed license to have a grow license. So he killed 18,000 grow ops in one shot. Now, the Crown made an appeal. They wanted everybody cut off. And John Conroy made a cross appeal. He said, let the other guys back in. And the Court of Appeals said, we don't understand why Manson, the judge, cut off half the people. He said they all got a right as a group to their medicine. Why would he leave half the guys out? We're going to send it back and ask him, did you forget? Now, Manson answered, I didn't forget. It was to push him onto the MMPR because of the viability of the regime that I cut them off. Now, the Court of Appeal hadn't even thought of that, and he'd mentioned it five times. So I'm screaming, let's appeal right away and go for an interim exemption to get people their grows back right away. So what does John Conroy do? He files a notice of appeal to expand the remedy, but he doesn't file for interim remedy. So everybody's going to wait six to eight months before they can start growing again. Then after two months, he says, I'm going to discontinue the appeal to the three judges higher than Manson so I can go back below to a judge equal to Manson and ask him to fix it. And that judge said, I got no power. Dismissed. So, John Conroy discontinued the appeal of everybody who got screwed across Canada out in BC so he could go back to the lower court with a judge who didn't have jurisdiction. Everybody is screwed. In the meantime, people who were screwed filed notices of appeal in the Court of Appeal saying, hey, Conroy ain't doing it, we want to do it. We want our exemptions back. We want to be able to move. If you move, if your designated grower dies, you lose your exemption. That's a medical reason. So, now Conroy, by discontinuing the appeal, lost everybody's case. So people had to file themselves. And now they were told, you got no standing even though you're in the group. Only Conroy's two people have a right and they discontinued, and they're not doing it, and you can't do it either. And now, 17 of them are in the Supreme Court of Canada asking for standing to be able to appeal Manson to get their bros back. So that is how they did it. How they cut off half the grows in Canada, and how they shift everybody's chances at ever getting them back by telling people who don't know anything about the courts, oh, we'll discontinue the appeal to the higher guys, and we'll go ask the guy, lower guy, without people realizing that the lower guy can't help them. That's what happened to the BC kids. So I have kits also for people who want to amend their exemptions. Reverend Kevin Moore wants to move from Alberta to Ontario. So he filed an application to the Federal Court of Appeal 
it will get rejected for no standing and for a lousy 75 bucks he files into the Supreme Court of Canada demanding his exemption with Jeff Harris and 17 others. Now, you may think 18 cases in the Supreme Court of Canada may not mean much, but they're not used to that many cases, especially by self-defenders. And some of them so broke, they can ask to have the $75 fee waived, and they do. So, right now, if you're one of the screwies of the Manson decision, there is nothing you can do after Conroy discontinued your appeal but start your own and my page at my website johntermel.com is amend so all the kits you need to file to change your exemptions are there or get your grow up are there also there's a page called smith beano quash which is for those who want to quash their current charges like the foreign quebec and the foreign ontario and then finally there's the page called overturn which I'm using on the 21st, and people in Quebec on the 22nd, and in Alberta, and Manitoba, and New Brunswick, and Newfoundland, and BC. So, that's all coming up in the next couple of weeks. We're taking advantage of the Smith decision. No one noticed that, hey, last time there was a bad exemption, people had their charges dropped. Well, this time, they didn't notice when the Supreme Court sent a really bad exemption that we should all have our charges dropped. But we're asking, if you're busted or if you've got a record, go to my site, johntermel.com slash kits, pick the right kit, and get in the fight. And that's it. Any questions about anything unclear? That's what's going on right now. So thank you, Carolyn, who was convicted and for free gets to file a motion in Ontario's highest court and then apply to the Supreme Court with a fee waiver, say, I'm not rich, can't afford 75 bucks, and you get your name in the archives of the website of the Supreme Court of Canada fighting your pot conviction. How you like that? That's what we can do now. So, spread your word to your friends. JohnTurmel.com slash kits has everything you need to fight, whether it's in civil court to get your amended, your permits amended, or it's in criminal court to quash your charge or appeal your conviction. What an adventure and what a card to pop into our hand at the last minute from the Supreme Court of Canada. I hadn't even realized how important it was. I just said, so what? Guys with ATPs can't get busted for using oil. And then it dawned on me, my buddy Tom Kennedy with the tumor on his head. If they're going to rate how much of his prescription you can get by smoked, well, smoke is five grams a day. What does that reduce to? One gram of oil to put on a three-inch tumor? That's how they're holding people back with this regulation on dry. And then I realized, wow, that's a lot worse than the bad exemption of 03, the bad exemption of 15. So, join us in the fight. We got the winning card. You gotta call this one the Joker and the Ace of Trumps. 21st of September, me and eight others in the Ontario Court of Appeal, Osgood Hall. I hope they get the 22nd in the Court of Appeal of Quebec, one Notre Dame. The 23rd is for four kids in the Provincial Court of Quebec looking to quash their charge. The 24th, Robert Nero, who runs the hemp fest at Moonbeam, Northern Ontario, was busted, and he's in Superior Court with a quash. And a whole bunch of other courts of appeal coming up. Stay tuned at my page at Facebook, John Termel, because the fight is almost over. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. And I'll upload this tonight. Thanks for being a fresh audience and make sure I cover all my points, you know? Oh, I should have covered this too. Yeah, I will. I will cover this for a minute. I'll splice it in. Now. Did you know that the judge in that decision said, we know the prescribed average is 18 grams across Canada, but Health Canada have surveys that have found one to three grams. Now, I, I'm the teaching assistant of Canada's mathematics and gambling course. Nobody's going to fool me with stats. 
So I went and I checked all of their stats, and their surveys didn't say what they said at all. And besides, if you know the true average is 18, what doofus in their right mind would expect any serious poll to come up with an average of two when the judge admitted it was 18? And how could the judge accept two when he himself said the actual average is 18? But he did. And therefore, he set a limit of five grams max for high users when some guys got 260 grams. Michael Pierce in Montreal, lots of guys got 100 grams because they juice it or they oil it or they do other stuff with it. But this guy, they want a limit of 5 grams max per 30 days, 150 gram max, based on these fraudulent surveys by Health Canada. And I caught them and I brought it to the court's attention. So anyway, that is the other part. And if the judge goes and leaves the 150 grand limit in, knowing that it's nine times too low, what does that make of that judge when he knows he's under-medicating seriously ill people by a factor of nine, and he knows it? Because Phelan hasn't yet ruled. That was the Manson decision about intermediate interim stuff. Now, Phelan, the other judge, he's the one coming down with a decision, but nothing can help those people except going themselves to the higher court where, fate, where Conroy discontinued. Amazing, eh? Conroy, the big hero barrister in all the books, going to be the guest speaker on the 26th at the normal conference in Toronto. And I got people going to ask him, why did you discontinue our appeal? And now they're dead. So anyway, that's the that was that 150 gram fraud I wanted to mention. So stay